So hello and welcome to the Action Coach Business Spotlight. I'm Lorna McAtee and along with my husband, John Bogus, we run Action Coach Cambridge. And what we do is we help business owners across the Cambridge region. And I couldn't be more excited today because I have with me Richard Hudson of Peterhouse Financial Planning. So Richard, welcome. Very good morning to you, Lorna. How are you? Uh, you know, I am Wonderful. Very excited to have you with me today. So this is your business spotlight. So listen, tell me, um, tell me about your business. Give us the background. Well, first of all, I'm honoured to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so yeah, I, well, I'm here to talk about my business and what I do really. So um, yeah, I'm, uh, I specialise in pensions and investments, um, estate and inheritance tax planning. I also do uh, arrange equity release, um, which are mortgages for older people, uh, people over the age of 55. Um, I also get involved in later life planning. And that's generally people that are over the age of 70, or, or you know, getting into their 70s, and business and personal life insurance as well. Um, so I can take a deep breath after all of that, can't I? So <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a lot. And, and it's, it, you know, I do get involved in a lot of different advice areas, you know, that's, I think it's mainly because of my experience in the industry, you know, I've had more than 20 years um, experience in financial services altogether. So um, I've been around the block a couple of times. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I think the other thing that I do and I, I really love and I'm, I'm quite passionate about is, um, you know, I make sure that clients have got, I make sure that we do uh, construct a, a really good financial plan as well. And I very often do that at the beginning um, because it, it really gives clients really good direction uh, for their future retirement and and they're really handy they reuse for people that are in retirement as well that want to do some um some goals based planning in retirement that, that's really interesting so who who's an ideal client for you then richard oh an ideal client for me would be well i mean i, I do work for all all types of different client but um a, a client that i really like to work with i think quite a lot is um you know people that have got inheritance tax issues um, it's really challenging work. It's 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 very complex. It's quite involved. Um, it gives me a challenge, um, and it really helps. I really feel like I'm helping the client and their family as well, um, because there's quite a lot of involvement with the rest of the family um, that comes along with inheritance tax uh, inheritance tax planning as well. <laughs> Put the teeth back in now. <laughs> Okay, um, so so in terms of financial planners and advisors, then what makes you different? Because there's, you know, th there's a number of them out there. There are quite a few of us, aren't there? Um, but not as many as you might think. Um, yeah, it's it's always it's the million dollar question, and it's the question I think that everybody hates um, being asked. But um, if I'm going to be completely honest and open about it. I really care about my clients and I like I love to take time uh, with my clients and to make sure that I do the best possible job. Um, and that involves, you know, doing the financial plan for a client from the beginning, like I mentioned before, mm. um, you know, making sure there's real direction um, with somebody's future retirement, you know, so we can really we can really plan for their future retirement, make sure that we can um, identify the income they the client wants in retirement, the uh, try and specify an age they want to retire or they can retire. And if there's any shortfall as well, then, then we can do something to make up for that, you know, um, put a plan in place to make up for that shortfall, improve the plan, you know, to give the client more income in retirement or retire earlier. Yeah. You know, so it's that level of detail, I think, that I, I drill down to with clients and, um, yeah, I think it's just the care over the care and time I spend with clients, really. Um, and I guess I'm quite useful, really, because I've got so many advice areas that can, I, I can advise on, you know. OK, so um, I, I guess I think things change for people. Yeah. So, yeah, you they know, do, constantly. Yeah. So so in terms of like involvement then and the time that you spend with people, mm. Um, that that must be quite considerable then it is I mean I, you know I speak to my clients you know through the year as well as uh, conducting an annual review I mean that that's one of the obligations that we have for our clients is always you know, we always have to um, at least do an annual review for our clients which I do you know I, I'm, I'm very good with that um, and you know that that would then involve you know making sure that they're 
um, making making sure that uh, their attitude to risk is still the same. If it's different, then we make some changes to their investments in accordance with that. Um, you know, check whether circumstances have changed. Um, you know, um, you know, all sorts of things can change with circumstances, job, um, levels of income, um, all of that sort of thing, really. So, yes, yeah, that there are there are all sorts of things that you need to keep an eye on and monitor. And and you know, going back again, going back to the financial plan, you know, I, I look at that. We go back and look at that with the client every year as well, um, just to make sure that we're on target. Um, you know, for our, our you know for their retirement plans you know oh, okay so so would it be fair then to say richard that you're a fairly constant and stable um person in people's lives then it's not just a transactional kind of one-time event you're you know as things change for them say if they get married or you know plan a family or get divorced or jobs change you're there by their side all the time absolutely i mean you know it's you know you you have to be involved with uh, if you really want, to, if you really, you know, know what you're doing, you have to be involved with the family. You know, you have to be involved with, um, you know, the children, what they're doing, what their plans are as individuals, because, you know, they're individuals as well. You know, whether they're um, planning to go to university or uh, whether a client, you know, um, wants to send their children to um, a private school, um, they're, you know, getting involved with grand uh, grandparents as well. Um you know, um, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's constant monitoring that needs to take place and you need to know your client really well. You know, I mean, it's, I, I often spend, you know, um, I often spend a couple of hours um, sitting down with the client face to face doing an annual review. Uh, that's quite common, you know, um, and time on the phone as well in between. And that's even before you've started any, you know, done any arranged any business, you know, for the client. So, yes. Yeah, so, is 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 a bit building time, up. A... It can be very time consuming. Yeah. But, but good. You know, that's what you that's 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 what you need to do. That's part of that. That's part of the job. You know that, and that's that's great. You know. So you you know you you invest a lot of time up front then to build that trusted relationship. So, um, in terms of um, you know where your business comes from, then um, you know is a lot of that referral based then built you know based that you've you've built up a trusted relationship with people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do you know what? If I'm going to be really honest and sort of not be boastful, but blow my own trumpet a little bit here, <laughs> you know, I, I I don't really find it that difficult you know, to build a rapport and, and gain trust from clients, you know, mm. you know why? Simply because I'm myself all the time and I'm just open and honest, um, you know, and, and I, I just, yes, I mean, you know, I find that, you know, it's not difficult for me to gain trust, but, you know, sometimes you have to work on it. Um, but I, yes, I do. I get referrals from clients, from family, friends, um, you know, business networking group that I'm part mm. of. Um, as well you know um so yes I'm, I'm i'm very i'm very active and i do get uh I, I do get you know um i do find that i get quite a few referrals yeah okay that that's interesting um how did you end up you know sort of in the in, in financial planning how did you end up here my god um really good <laughs> question do you want me to, do you want me to start with do you want me to start with did i ever think i'd end up in financial services well, Maybe. why not? Yeah, Maybe tell me. That. Well, the answer to that was definitely not, if I'm completely honest. I mean, I when I was a kid, I always thought I would, you know, be a going to the Royal Marines as a as a Marine or an officer. I did I did a Marine officer training when I was younger, when I was when I was 16. Um, I did well um and went on a couple of, you know, did a couple of courses um, you know, with the Royal Marines, uh, did some parachuting, all that sort of thing. It was great, it was amazing. <laughs> you know, the experience that I got from it was incredible. And that's what I always thought I, I, I was going to do. And I I actually, just to the point where I did a sports science degree at university as well. Um, but then getting to the end of my degree, I kind of, I had a bit of, bit of a U-turn in my thinking. Um, and my sister was, uh, she was a recruitment agent in London at the time, because I lived, I lived in, I'm from Essex, I lived in Essex at the time. Um, and um, she said, well, look, I've got this fantastic opportunity with, you know, uh, with a, a financial house in London. Why don't you go and work with them? And I thought, well, she she enticed me with the money. 
um, which some people say is the root of all evil. But yeah, she enticed me, enticed me in with the money. And I said, well, why not give it a go? Because do you know what? I, I kind of decided against going into the Royal Marines, but there weren't really many opportunities or any opportunities in the sports industry at the time. Um, I mean, we're talking talking about a good 27 years ago now. I know I don't look it, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 48, 49 this year, uh, and I finished my degree a very long time ago. So the industry really wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite ready, you know. It wasn't ready for you. It wasn't ready for me. Do you know what? That's what I was thinking. I didn't say it, but I was thinking that. So um, in, in, in your financial planning um, then career rather than your Royal Marines non-career um you know what what would you say is the biggest issues that you've overcome I mean obviously it must be really interesting through the whole Covid yeah. pandemic and financial crashes and yeah I think you know it's certainly been challenging you know I I, I, I take my hat off to any financial advisor out there really that's um you know that's been through the last few years because it hasn't been easy has it we've had you know a couple of years of Covid um, and the more recent events that have been going on around the world as well. Um, it's been very challenging, to say the least. But, you know, I for me, I would say really starting a business from scratch, um, you know, with no initial investment or no help from from anyone, really, just, just doing it on my own. Um, that is a challenge. You know, it is a real challenge. And you've got to really think about, you know, how you're going to, you know, break into the world of financial advice and how, where you're going to get your business from. Okay, so sort of on reflection, then, Richard, um, you know, what would you say the biggest learnings that you've had in business and in life? Um, oh, easy one, really easy. Keep going no matter what. You know, uh, I've got this inherent determination to carry on and never give up. It's it's a bless it's a blessing and it's a curse as well. I think, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I, you know, definitely keep going no matter what. Um, you you have to keep trying. You have to keep, you know, even if new things don't work. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, e even if some things don't work, try something new. I think that's what I was trying to say. Um, you know, I've, everything's a state of mind, isn't it? Um, you know, and I think, you know, I've, I think, you know, I've, I've proven that. I, I've proved that time and time again. Um, because, you know, I, I give you, I give you a little story and, and something that happened to me recently, actually, because I think it's, it's mildly interesting. Um, but just to prove <laughs> that things are a state of mind, um, you know, I, I, I run and I, you know, I don't do a lot. I'm not a, a good season runner, but I do the Cambridge Half Marathon, as you know. Um, oh. I've, I've done it for the last three years. Um, and I do a bit of training during the year, more training nearer the event, of course. Um, <laughs> But I do that. And I, so I run on a fairly regular basis, you know, um, and I decided my partner ran the London Marathon uh, the other day, literally a couple of days ago. And um, it really she really inspired me um, to want to do it. I ran it before in 2001, um, but I really haven't run it since. And she really inspired me. And the whole I don't know if, whether you've spectated at the London Marathon or been there, but it's mm. a hugely inspirational and positive event. Um and I thought, you know what? I'm going to run it, you know. Um, I'm, I'm going to do it next year. Uh, now, previously, my runs were like four to six miles. You know, I wouldn't really, during the year, I wouldn't really do much uh, more than that or go further than that. Um, but literally, the day after I made the conscious decision to enter or put my application in for the London Marathon, I haven't got a place yet. I have to wait and see. But the day after I did that, I went out and did a nine-mile run. You know, there you go. so it's all about a state of mind. It's all about readjusting your thinking, I think. And that's there's definitely a crossover there between your personal and, and business life because you, you do the same things in your, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you adopt similar um, philosophies, I think, in your personal and your business life. Uh, so that was just re a very recent, simple example, I think, of how everything is just a state of mind, you know, and, and, I, and I went out and you know, because I readjusted my thinking, I went, I did this nine mile, nine mile run and I adopted the strategy where I'm going to just take it easy from beginning to end. And it, you know, it was, it was an easy run. Um, See, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because when you have a very clear vision on what yeah. it is that you're looking to achieve, mm -hmm. um, you know, you set your RAS 
you know, your your attitude towards it and you'll find what you're looking for. Yeah, you know, you, it, you went you, out and you, you did know. nine miles, you know. It's exactly. And it's yeah, it's it's readjusting your thinking, it's focusing, and it's just working towards a goal, keep on working towards it and never stop, you know. So that's a that's a great attitude, Richard. And speaking of inspiration, so you talked about Renata doing the marathon to yeah. inspire you, but you know, wh where does your inspiration come from? And um, in terms of success, you know, who comes to mind when when you think of somebody that's successful? I've always really, do you know, I've always um, uh, quite admired Richard Branson, and it, it, hmm. it's probably it's it's probably quite a com he's probably quite a common role model. Um, for a lot of people, especially a lot of business people. But the reasons for me that him being a role model, I think, is that he comes across as being very approachable and personal mm. and extremely successful in how he deals with people in his company. At least that's the impression that you get. Um, you know, I follow him on LinkedIn. I, I've, I've never had any kind of, you know, um, engagement with him, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah, he's he's just hugely successful in business and with people as well. And I think that's so important. That's a real measure of success. When the people mm. within your company really like you and you have such a successful business or empire, then that's really got to be, um, you know, that's got to be the ultimate goal really, hasn't it? I think yeah. in business and, you know, I, I admire his ability to, um, you know, build up companies across different industries in business as well, because, you know, he's got so many, he's, the Virgin name goes from, you know, Virgin, Virgin Media in the media industry to, you know, um, you know, um, spaceships or whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. that term is that, you know, for, for commercial space flights, um, you, you know, so it's really, it's, it's really impressive. And, he really understands diversity in business, you know, and, and that's what I have to, that's what I have to advise my clients on is to be diverse and diversity mm. is key. I think in business, whether you're investing money, you know, uh, whether you're, you know, you have uh, thinking about starting up another business or um, I think it's a really key and important factor overall, really in, in business. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say, Richard Branson, he just comes across as really authentic. What you see is what you get. Yeah, and, and exactly. I, yeah, I, I get a real sense that that is genuinely who he is. And that just makes him so relatable. Um, and, you know, when you're a normal, authentic, you know, when you're your normal, authentic self that's relatable to people and you have that success, then it is really inspirational for for so many people. So, Richard, tell me, Peterhouse um, Financial Planning, what's the future? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really good question. I mean, I, I really like working with um, people to resolve or solve inheritance tax issues. So typically it's private clients, um, um, but anyone really that's got inheritance tax issue. I mean, having said that, you know, as I said, I work with, you know, um, people on the pensions and investment side. Very often it involves um, other areas of advice as well. It's not just inheritance tax. It is yep. it, pensions, it's investments like ISAs or unit trusts or bonds or whatever the solution might be. Yep. Um, very often with that type of client, there is, you know, as I said, it's complex planning and there's there's lots of different products that are available for, for clients like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think I've already answered this question really. It's, I, I like it because it's a challenge and, you know, you're really helping clients with complex problems. It's something I can really get my teeth stuck into. Um, and you're helping the rest of the family and you're engaging with the rest of the family as well, because whatever you do for, for them, you know, you have to take into, you have to consider the rest of the family, the children, the grandchildren, you know, mm -hmm. there's lots of wider financial planning to do with, with, in, in, you know, with that. So, um, the challenges, I suppose it's, it's managing all of that really, isn't it? It's the administration side, but that's an easy problem to solve because, mm -hmm. You know, if you need, you know, you can get people in to help you to, you know, to to deal with that side of to deal with that side of it, really. And I think it goes back to, um, you know, um, really wanting to service my clients. And that's a number one priority for me. Um, so I consider that a challenge going forward, the administration mm -hmm. side. Um, 
it is a pro you know it's a priority for me to service clients so i would think about that as a challenge going forward but as i said it's it's quite an easy challenge that you can resolve yeah, absolutely. Because you, 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 you know, you surround yourself with, you know, with, with the right people, and it means that then you can focus on doing what you're great at doing. Um. So, so you said that you're, you know, you're, you're the very young age at forty eight. Um. Thinking back to your eighteen year old self and and knowing what you know now, what's the best advice you would give your eighteen year old self? Oh God. Um. Let's look at my notes. No, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this interview at all, am I? Um. I do you know what I I would um I would have I I would say I would definitely would have loved to have uh, become a financial advisor sooner um you know I've been in the financial services industry for a long time as I said for about 20 years but I haven't been a financial advisor for 20 years um so I would you know I think I would I would definitely have given myself that advice if I could go back um and don't spend too long on the things that you know aren't going to work. Um, you know, going back to what I said about having, you know, a lot of determination and having mm. this personality, this character where, you know, I find it hard to give up. Um, you know, if some things aren't working, then maybe sometimes you do, you know. Um, it's just being sensible about things and not being a bit pig-headed about, you know, uh, about things, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Been, uh, been too so, been too stubborn to you know to to say do you know what this isn't working let's do something different let's take yeah, the learning yeah. from it and 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 exactly. channel the learnings into something yes. positive yeah, Ab exactly. absolutely yeah. yeah so so listen Richard just before we wrap up is mm -hmm. there anything else that we should know about you maybe something that you're working on or just something else that might be good to share with people yeah, I mean, um, you know, I offer, I think financial plans are really key in providing financial advice. Um, so I offer financial plans as part of my overall service. Um, it's usually a chargeable service, but I don't charge for that um, because I believe it should be, you know, part of my service. Um, I don't charge consultations or meetings either. Uh, so I don't charge for my time. Um, and the reason I think I don't do that is because you can pr really provide good financial advice and good planning um, and it gives everyone the opportunity to be able to get that it's mm -hmm. available it's then available to everyone isn't it yeah. Um, so yeah I suppose that's what you know that's my uh, part of my offering I think you know that's what you know the part of my offering that I'd like to focus on yeah it's it's just it's in including people and making people feel that they're, you know, you don't have to be rich to have a financial advisor because a lot of people do think that. Mm, yeah. Think, oh, yeah, you've got a financial advisor. God, you must have loads of money. Um, it's not always about that. Well, I mean, I'm sure, you know, there are some advisor, financial advisors that do charge for absolutely everything, um, you know, but, you know, I, I don't. Um, yeah, so it's it's making financial advice available. That's okay. So, so so affor affordable to everyone, available to everyone, uh, and giving um you know complete advice on every aspect. And I, I would imagine that the some people would come to you um and they don't really know what it is that they want. Yeah. Um or what they need. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, the most common one is, you know, there aren't many people that really know an awful lot about pensions. Mm. Um, you know, they have them, but they don't really know an awful lot about them. And, you know, when you start to educate them, it's not just with pensions, it's with other things as well. Yeah. Uh, but when you start to educate them, you really do, you, you're able to really help people, you know, understand um, what they've got and what it can do for them going forward you know and it, and it's really common it makes me laugh mm. it's really common when i see you know whether it's an existing, existing client or a new client um when i go and see them they'll the, one of the first things they'll say is i've got a pension but yeah there's nothing in it or there's not much in it you know thinking that there's them thinking there's about 10 grand you know in uh, in terms of what their pension is worth um and then when i look into it when i start doing some due diligence and i start looking at the pension scheme details you know it comes back that they've got 60 70 000 in there you know um and in the grand scheme of things that's not a huge pension pot but the point is you know people don't often know what they've got you yeah. know 
I mean, there are pension pots, obviously, you know, much larger than that that I work with with clients. But, um, you know, that's just um, that can be quite a common situation, really. And if yeah. there are, you can imagine, if there are four or five pension pots out there like that, well, then that is going to make a significant difference to somebody's retirement. Yeah. And then keeping an eye on that is really important as well, because you don't want to lose uh, those valuable pension benefits when you retire either, do you? So that's all, that's where I can come in, you know, um, helping people understand something, you know, things like pensions, helping them understand what they've got, what it's going to do for them in the future, um, and putting a plan around all of that, you know, God, I keep on coming back to this flipping financial plan, don't I? But it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm quite passionate about it because it's so important, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what I'm hearing, Richard, is you know, there's nobody too small and there's nobody too big. You can actually help everybody, regardless of what stage they are in life, no matter how old they are. Um, you know, it's really about making sure that they've they've got the best. They understand all the opportunities and they've got the best options in place to get them where they want to be. A bit like what I do as a coach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I deal with clients all age ranges. You know, I mean, it's it's less common. Um, you know, it's less common for somebody, um, you know, some some somebody in their early twenties to want to start actively putting money into pension. I mean, that's 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 only natural. That's quite mm. common um, because you know somebody at that age think that they're going to live forever. You know, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, yes, it is with my line of work. It is more common to deal with people in their forties, fifties, sixties, seventies plus. Um, but yeah, um, but having said that, I have got you know, clients that are very young, that have a lot of foresight, uh, that, that see the value in investing for their future, you know, which is really, yeah. and I love that. I love to see that, you know. Um, I think that's, uh, that's quite admirable, really. I, I yeah. really respect that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people that are young age are really invested in in, in making sure that they get, you know, that they they're secure in their older life or even like you say you know the thing that you do that's kind of unique to you is you actually give people a visual of what the what the financial plan could look like and you adjust it to fit their circumstances and do lots of audio planning you know yeah. we were kind of speaking beforehand so just having that visual um and and you know sort of putting in different scenarios I, I imagine that that would be really valuable to people it's extremely valuable and people get an awful lot out of, out of it and they and they 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 love it as well I mean they love me formulating financial plans for them and seeing what their future can look like do you know one of the things that's really important that comes out of that is it gives them peace of mind um yeah. them, uh, and they you know they build they then realize well you know they can retire at a certain age or, or whatever age that, mm. that, that that is and it will give, give them an idea of the kind of income that they'll be looking at in retirement you know and i think that's really important for somebody's mental well-being yeah. and health it really really is because a lot of people go along in life thinking, oh, I have no idea when I'm going to re retire. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, what age I'm going to be. I don't know what sort of income or money I'm going to have in retirement. And, and I think that can be a demon for people, you know, yeah. but if you can close that door and actually answer all those questions, provide that peace of mind, I think that's really important for mental health. Yeah, absolutely. And just knowing. And, and knowing what you have to do to achieve yeah. what it is that you want to achieve and what that picture yeah. looks like. So, so Richard, if people want to get in touch with you to find out more about any of these multitude of different services that you offer or can advise people on, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Well, they can ring me. They can email me. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Richard Hudson on LinkedIn, uh, Peter House Financial Planning on Facebook. Um, and all my all my details are on there. I'm, I'm quite transparent with you know my contact details so yeah that that's that's how people can get in contact with me quite easy really okay so what i'll do richard with the write-up that's going to go out with this uh with, with this video interview i'll put all your contact details um in there as well so um they'll be there for for for, for people to um contact you and a multitude of different different ways so Richard this has been really really interesting um, I hope that you've thank enjoyed you. it um, and it really I has have. been a pleasure yes it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much thank you so much for your time okay thank you Lorna